So in this uh, problem, we're going to look at the max function. Once again, I've thrown a pair of dice. I mean, I'll get IID uniform 1 to 6 as the distribution. I'm going to look at max of x comma y. Okay. So again, you follow these two steps. Whenever you do functions of random variables, you always do two steps. The first step is find the range of z. In this case, the range of z is much, much simpler. The range is from 1 to 6, right? Max of any of these two numbers, you know, they fall between 1 to 6. The max of the two is always going to be 1 to 6. Next, you again add over the contours. Now, adding over the contours is going to be a little bit more difficult here, right? So I'm not going to do the graphical method. I'll, I'll encourage you to work out the graphical method on your own. I will do the algebraic sort of method, okay? So let's look at one, right? If you want the max of the two throws to be one, the only possibility is one comma one. Anything else happens, the max will go off to something bigger, okay? So what about max being two? So if the max has to be two, one of the two throws has to be two, right? So supposing the first throw is two, okay? The second throw can be one or the second throw can be two, okay? So this both will give you max 2 and then I've missed out one possibility here. The first throw can be 1 and the second throw can be 2, right? How did I get that? Think about how I got that. So, you know, 2 comma 1, 2 comma 2 and 1 comma 2. Uh, if you want to visualize the, uh, this possibility, you know, this is max equals 2. So I got you know, uh, 1 comma 2, 2 comma 2 and 2, uh, 2 comma 1 as a possibility in each of these things, right? So, you see, you see that 1 comma 2, 2 comma 2, uh, 2 comma 1, okay? So, 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 this needs a little bit of visualization. You can even visualize graphically from 2 comma 2, I have to go down or to the left, right? So, I get, you know, two more possibilities. Think that through a little bit, take some time. We'll do this for 3, you will again get 3 comma 1. 3 comma 2, 3 comma 3 and then you will go down below 2 comma 3, 1 comma 3. So you have 5 possibilities, right? So for 4, you have 7 possibilities. 4 comma 4, 3 values below it, 3 values to the left of it. 3 plus 3 plus 1, 7, okay? For 5, you will get 9. How? 5 comma 5, 4 values below it, 4 values to the left of it, 4 plus 4 plus 1 is 9, okay? 6, you will get 11. Again, 6 comma 6. 5 values below it, 5 values to the left of it, 10 plus 1, 11, okay? So, I'm doing an intellectual, in, in, an intelligent table creation. It's still a table creation, except that I'm smartly identifying all the values that give me the same repetition, so adding over the contours to quickly get the value that I want, okay? So, this is the way in which you do max of uh, a pair of dice. So, in the last couple of slides that I have uh, in this lecture, I'm going to generalize what we did before, okay? So, this is going to really need a little bit more imagination from you, okay? But it's a good problem to work on. Supposing, instead of fixing, uh, you know, a pair of ties or something, I'm going to give x and y to be iid uniform in the range 1 to n, 1 to all the way to n, okay? And w equals x plus y. I'm going to define the sum as the ra new random variable w, okay? Now, how do you uh, do it? The first step, once again, is the, okay, so let me just go step by step. So, step one is the range, isn't it? Range is going to be 2, 3, so on till 2n, right? That's easy to see. So, it starts with 2, goes all the way to 2n, okay? Now, for each possibility, supposing I say w equals w, Okay, what are the various possibilities? It can be 1 comma w minus 1, 2 comma w minus 2, so on, right? It looks like it can go all the way till w minus 1 comma 1, okay? So now what's the issue here? The main issue is w minus 1 has to be less than or equal to n, right? w minus 1 has to be less than or equal to n for all of these things to count, okay? If w, w goes above, w minus 1 goes above n, then these possibilities won't occur, okay? So, you have to be very careful when you do this. As you go from w equals 2, 3, so on, you will keep on adding, it's okay, but you can go all the way up to n plus 1, and when you go beyond n plus 1, the number of possibilities will decrease again, okay? 
So you have to account for that very, very carefully. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to leave it as an exercise for you and uh, justify why this answer is correct. Okay. So uh, the probability of W equals one, small w is W minus 1 by n squared for W between 2 and n plus 1. Okay. And from n plus 1, n plus 2 to 2n, you will get 2n minus w plus 1 by n squared. Okay. So it's an exercise to prove this formula. Uh, it's a good exercise. Uh, try out various cases. You will quickly see the pattern. And once you identify the pattern, you will be able to do this. Okay. What's most interesting about this is it looks like an ugly expression, but it has a fantastic visualization in terms of the stem picture. Okay. So I like really the stem picture visualization. You had a PMF for x, which was just flat you know, 1 by n, I picked n equals 10. So you have 0.1, it's flat from, uh, you know, 1 to 10. Probability of y equals y is also flat, okay. Notice what happens to the sum. The sum has a triangular shape, okay. Why is that? Because, you know, 11 has a very high chance of appearing, right. 11 appears with maximum repetitions in the sum. On the other hand, 2 and 20 appear with very few repetitions. Only one out of the hundred possibilities will give you a sum of two. One out of the hundred possibilities will give you a sum of 20 when n is 10. On the other hand, for 11, you know, you have 10 possibilities giving you uh, that answer. So it goes all the way up to 0.1 in probability, right? So 10 by 100, you get 0.1 probability, right? So this is, uh, if you want to visualize, this is 10 by 100. This is 1 by 100. This guy is also 1 by 100. Okay, so you see how you get a triangle shape when you add up two uniform flat uh, PMFs. When they are independent, you get a triangle. Okay, so this is a nice thing to remember about sum. You know, when you add two uniforms, you will get a triangle. Okay, so these are shapes uh, that may show up in histograms that you look at, and it can help you identify what's happening. But it all depends on this count. You know, if you want intricate formulae like this, uh, you you'll need careful count and being able to do this. Okay, so this is for uh, uniform IID sum of two uniform IIDs when they go from 1 to n, you know, in the sequence in a nice way. So let me also do max. Max is slightly easier. Uh, once again, I'm going to give you the answer. Uh, if you have z equals z, in fact, this is uh, easy. Max, uh, the range is from 1 to n. If you take a particular value z, you have z comma z, and then, you know, uh, z comma z minus 1 all the way down to z comma 1 and then on the left you will have z minus 1 comma z all the way down to these are my stars you know I'm sorry putting dots here all the way down to uh, uh, 1 comma z okay so you have uh, z minus 1 of them here here you have another z minus 1 here so the total is 2 times z minus 1 plus 1 plus this one guy and that is 2z minus 1 okay so that's how I got the count here so it's, it's that you know for the max you have this contour which is like in this shape okay you go through and count it up you will get uh, uh, 2z minus 1 plus 1 and that is uh, 2z minus 1 so we see how the 2z minus 1 comes for the max. Uh, you can either visualize it with the contour uh, that I showed before or you can just analytically look at the max of xy and simply, simply count the number of x comma y that gives you a max equal to z and you will get it. If you do that, uh, you can uh, have this wonderful visualization x equals x uh, is flat from 0, 1 to 10, y equals y again is flat from 1 to 10. These are independent uniform uh, distributions and equals 10 is the illustration. And notice how max has this uh, sort of a shape okay so these kind of shapes are good to sort of remember that when you have uniform distributions uh, sum goes to a triangle and max has this kind of uh, upward slope uh, coming in okay so min is a exercise uh, go ahead and try it min also has a very similar uh, way in which you can work except you can imagine it, it's, it's not going to be a triangle that increases it's going to be a triangle that uh, decreases okay so hopefully this helps you visualize a little bit, uh, you know, if, if you want to apply max and min and sum to other distributions which are not uniform, then it will be a little bit more complicated, okay. The summation will become intricate. Here in this case, you just had to count and then you could just divide it up and get it. It's very easy. 
when you have geometric distribution or Poisson distribution, it will be a much more complicated ugly sum. Uh, depending on your algebraic uh, you know, felicity with manipulations, you may be able to get it down to a simple expression. Uh, but you know, quite often if you just search on the internet, people will give you answers on how uh, these distributions look when you add them up together. Okay? So hopefully this lecture gave you a picture of how to visualize these functions of multiple random variables and uh, hopefully that is interesting. Okay? Thank you.